I was on the staff of the American Conservative Union back in 1973 when the very first CPAC was held. And I helped put that one on. Look where, where we are today. It's a very <laughs> big gathering. Oh, yes, much larger. We, we held the first one in the Mayflower Hotel. You couldn't put this entire thing in two Mayflower hotels. It's very well, large. Let's get down to the business. All right. As a conservative, yes. how do you reach out to the progressives so we can build a better America for everyone? Well, it is necessary for everyone to agree to be civil in our discussions. We can't be name calling. We can't be calling people names and, and stupid and, and wrong and send them to jail and that sort of thing. It just doesn't work. You're never going to establish a real dialogue that way. Now, I spent all eight years working in the Reagan administration, including four years at the Justice Department. I know a fair amount about the law and the legal aspects of um, our ideological, philosophical disagreements. A few years after, I did a daily radio program, three hours a day, five days a week, with Barry Lynn, who is my polar opposite politically and philosophically. Um, he was uh, uh, worked for the ACLU on Capitol Hill. He now heads Americans United for Separation of Church and State. I am... Uh, so you have a good background. I have a good background. I, I am a former executive of the Knights of Columbus, and we disagreed on everything. Good. But at the end of the day, we put all that aside, sat down and had a cup of coffee together, and we became fast friends. And to this day, we are very good friends. It is possible to be friends and disagree enormously. You simply have to be determined to do it in a civil fashion. Let me ask you this question. Yes. Since you are on the CPAC, some of the speeches I heard in the last two days were making the left evil people. How do we, we can avoid that? If you make somebody evil, you cannot talk. Well, you just asked me to write the speech. <laughs> Would you do that? <laughs> I, I don't. Would you, can there, that be there, a theme there, next year? There, there is, it's, a, it's a free country, and they, they, they're free to say what they wish. But I think what you will find many times is that kind of speech doesn't necessarily always go along, uh, go well with the crowd. Some will cheer, of course. Some will be hooting and hollering. But a lot of other people will simply be sitting there quietly with their hands in their, in their laps and not responding to that. But as leaders, don't we have the responsibility to manage the crowd towards I am an America where we don't hate each other? <laughs> America is also the land of liberty. And liberty means you, you are free to speak as you wish. But that doesn't mean that I can't tell you that you are wrong to speak that way, that you're not making things better. I agree. Can we make suggestions? Can we give them guidelines? If you do this, these would be the outcomes. <laughs> if you do this, you are creating animosity. Well, there are parts of the country uh, where you can do that. Uh, I originally come from flyover country, uh, the Midwest, uh, where most people are Midwest nice. We don't uh, speak that way to each other. Other parts of the country, especially on the coasts, have a habit of, of uh, disagreeing uh, disagreeably. Uh, One short message from you. Yes. To my audience. Be nice, be civil, be responsible, and make your arguments passionately but civilly. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.